Welcome to Stark State College's developmental math class. This video is intended to help you to understand how this class works better and there will be a quiz on this video after it's done so you might want to take some notes or write down some of the important information so you can remember it later. So what exactly is this class? Well there are a lot of things that we could talk about that are involved with this class but there's two main ideas that we want you to understand. The first thing is that this class is self-paced and individualized. As we all know, math is not a one-size-fits-all topic. Uh, some people struggle and fall behind. Some people get it and move ahead. And so what this allows for you to do is if you're one of those people that moves ahead and you get done early, that's great. You, you're done with the class. You can actually go home and not come back to class. Or if you have more of the developmental math classes to go, you can move into the next class and any work you get done in there, you can get done at no additional charge. And on the other end, if you're a person who struggles and you just can't finish the work, um, what, this, what this does allow you to do is next semester, you don't have to start over. You can pick up where you left off and continue your work. Of course, you will have to sign up for the class again, but at least you won't have to start over. And we are here to help you understand what you need, when you need it, not when the person next to you needs it. The next thing is that this class is mastery learning based. And what that means is that you can't move to the next topic until you show mastery, which is 80% or better on everything in this topic. And there's two reasons for that. One is that math builds on itself. Um, if you don't understand A, then when we get to B, you'll be totally lost. And the second reason is, is that we know if people get a C or below in their current math course, then they have about a 15 to 20 percent chance to pass the next course. So we wouldn't be doing you any favors if we simply allowed you to pass through these, these courses. Another question you might ask yourself is, why are we doing this? Why are we changing our math classes? Well, the main reason is what we're doing right now does not have very good results. Um, our current pass rates, depending on the semester and depending on the class, fall anywhere from 27% to 45%, and it's, not, and it's not getting any better. Now, before you say, well, this is because you guys are doing a bad job, this is, this is a problem at almost every two-year school or four-year open enrollment university in the country. And then what also happens is even if people do get out of these developmental classes, they, they don't pass the college level course because they're missing key ideas and key concepts. Another thing is, is that we have looked at data from other schools that have gone to, to systems just like this, and they have had pass rates that have gone quite a bit better. Um, depending on the school, they're looking at pass rates well over 50% into the 60s, 70s, and in some cases even into the 80s. And that's something that we want to have here at Stark State. And then the, the last thing is, is simply people struggle with math. And people struggle with math at different, at different paces. There's nothing that we can do that will just simply give you the information, but we're hoping that we can make it better. One thing you might say to yourself right now is you need somebody up front explaining this to you. Well, what we want you to know is that all, everything that we might say in a classroom is still available to you. It's available on videos, in PowerPoints, and in your book. And we just we want to ask that you make sure that you use those things. You can, you can still take notes, you can ask questions, but you can do that when you want to and when you need to, not when the person next to you needs to. Um, and here's the biggest problem is in order to be self-paced, there is no way for us to stand up in front and give lectures to the entire class because every one of you will be in a different place. And what the way this changes is your instructor's role and the tutor's role is to help get you unstuck, to fill in the gaps if you don't understand something. So what is it that you do in this class? Well, the short answer is that you work. Um, if you haven't noticed already, time is money in this class because if you can move on and start into the next class, that'll save you money. If you can get done and you want to go home and do something else, you can do that too. And if you don't get your six modules done this semester, you will receive an NC or an F and you'll have to retake the class and pay for the class again. And now, like we talked about earlier, of course, you can pick up where you left off, but you don't want that to happen. So you work. And here's a key to this is you can do any of this anywhere except for the test. You have to do the tests on campus. 
but all the rest of the things you can do at home, you can do at a friend's house, you can do at the library, you can do at other computers here at Stark State. And, and another important idea is you need to, you should work outside of class. Um, in a regular class, they say you should work two to three hours outside of class for every hour you spend in class, and that's true in this class as well. So besides the three hours you're scheduled per week in this class, you should be spending six to nine hours outside of class every week. And like I said just a minute ago, you can't take the tests outside because they are proctored and password protected. So what is a module? Well, the module consists of four components that you have to complete. And again, it has to be completed at 80%. The first thing that, that's in a module is the pretest. And this, this pretest works like a placement exam for that particular module. And it, it works like a placement exam because anything you show that you know how to do on the pretest will be taken out of or marked right in your homework. So you'll get a custom made homework assignment. Now, it's important to know that you only get one attempt on the pretest. So if you don't like your score, well, you have to move on anyway. Um, you are allowed to, and this happens quite a bit, so don't be afraid to just submit the pretest for a zero because the, the homework will not open. You won't be able to start on your graded homework until you take the pretest. And if you do submit the pretest for a zero, it won't count against your grade. The second thing that you have to work on after you finish the pretest is your homework. And again, that's based on your pretest score. And don't forget, as you're working through your homework, to watch your videos and to watch your PowerPoints and read your book or whatever it is that you find that works best for you. And then after you finish your homework, you work on a quiz, which is open book. And you can do it at home. You can do it anywhere you want to do it. Um, but you should treat it as a practice for the post-test, which is, which is the last thing you have to do. And it's important. This is very, very important. Maybe write this down. You have to turn in your quiz work in order to take the post-test. So as you're working on the quiz, make sure you number and show your work for every problem. And the last thing you do is you take the post-test. The post-test works like a final exam for the module. So how do you pass a module? How do you get through a module? There, there's two ways to do it. The first way is if you get an 80% or better on the pretest, you move on to the next pretest. The next way is if you don't get an 80% on the pretest, and we don't expect you to, it like, like the name says, it's a pretest, but if you don't get an 80%, then your custom made homework will appear, will unlock, and you have to get an 80% or better on each of those homework assignments. Then once you've finished all your homework assignments, you take at the quiz and you have to get an 80% on that. And remember, that's like a practice test. And then you have to get an 80% or better on the post test. And one word of warning is don't spend too much time preparing for the pretest. We don't require every topic in every chapter. So as you're studying for the pretest, you're not quite sure what to study for. You're probably going to study everything and you could be wasting your time. A good rule of thumb is to spend maybe one or two days getting ready for the pretest. So where do you go from here? What is the first thing you need to do? Well, the first thing is you're going to read through the rest of the important information. Some of it's required and some of it isn't, but we recommend you read through all of it so that you have a good idea of what to do in this class. The next thing you're going to have to do is to take the orientation quiz. It's a very easy quiz, but you need to get all of them right to start the class. This quiz is just to make sure that you, you didn't skip through and not watch any of this stuff. It's important that you understand how this class works. And then as soon as you're ready, you would want to take the first pretest. Uh, make sure before you start to check with your instructor if you're not sure which modules you need to do. Um, you should be ready to take the first pretest by your next class meeting. Now if you're in a weekend class, since you only meet once a week, you should probably be ready sometime sooner. You can come in during the week and take it even if you need to. But you don't want to waste an entire week before you get into the first module. A few last things to remember as you go through this class. First of all, if you want to pass this class, you'll have to do some work, both inside and outside of class. Don't expect to just come in for your three hours every week, put in your time, and, and have enough work done at the end. 
you need to spend, depending on your level in, of math understanding and how much you struggle, you'll need to spend s uh, several hours outside of class every week working on this stuff. Uh, the second thing is, is you have to make sure you find some way to gather your information. Y if you like videos or the PowerPoints or your book, the point is don't just keep working problems and hoping you'll find a pattern in the problem and you'll memorize how to do that problem. It will never work for you like that. Don't just keep working until you hurt, until your brain hurts and your hands hurt and, you, and you're frustrated. Make sure you understand. Once you've tried to understand, maybe you've watched a video and you still don't get it, make sure you ask one of us. We're all here to help you. And it's because our main goal, the thing that we're all here for, is for you to succeed. We want you to pass this class. We want you to understand the math. So if you have any questions about anything you watched in this video, you can uh, raise your hand or put your cup up and ask your instructor to, to explain, or you can re-watch the video. Thank you for watching, and good luck.